Welcome to Ace Linguistics. This channel is about all things linguistic, discussing topics in phonetics, phonology, morphology, syntax, semantics, and sociolinguistics. So let's see what we've got today. What is articulatory phonetics? Articulatory is the adjective for articulate or articulation, and it means to produce speech. So articulatory phonetics, as the name suggests, has to do with production of speech. Then you have acoustic phonetics, which is about the sounds and the way sound waves travel from mouth to ear of the hearer. And then auditory, which is about hearing the sounds. So today's discussion is about articulatory phonetics. Think of this analogy. You can think of a speech as a symphony, which is produced by a built-in submachine in the human body machine. So if you think of it as a big machine and there's submachines inside it, articulatory phonetics is about how this submachine works. There is a submachine which is built in, which is part of it, and it consists of the lungs that pump up the air, the trachea, and then the vocal tract. Speech sounds are produced or articulated in the vocal tract. What is the vocal tract? Okay, this is a picture of the vocal tract. If you look at the lungs, they pump up the air. Once the air is pumped up, so what the vocal tract does is to convert air into sound. So conversion of air into sound is articulation. Think of speech sounds as acoustic energy. We know that energy changes form. So here we have aerodynamic energy, which is produced by the lungs, which is converted into acoustic energy by the vocal tract. As I've told you before, this physiological submachine of the human body is primarily not intended for speech. It is something that is secondarily. It was something later we noticed that, oh, we have lungs and we have air, which comes out and it can result in sounds. So we can use those sounds for a purpose. And that's how language was created. So the vocal tract, the lungs have a primary purpose, which is eating and breathing. But the secondary purpose is language. So what happens there is aerodynamic energy changes into acoustic energy, which is speech. So the lungs just provide the energy as a source of the aerodynamic energy, but the vocal tract taking, takes it from there. What is a vocal tract? The vocal tract consists of the larynx or laryngeal cavity, which contains the larynx, the pharynx, the oral cavity, and the nasal cavity. This is the vocal tract. So, so if you think of the articulatory submachine, it's the vocal tract plus the lungs. And of course, the trachea, which is the windpipe that connects the lungs to the vocal tract. So it would be three parts. So articulatory phonetics is about how air is turned into sound in the human body. Speech sounds are created by reshaping the stream of air that is pumped up by the lungs into the vocal tract. You may say, okay, this is the air, this is the sound. What is going on in between there that this happens? Now we need to get more specific. Divide speech sounds into two groups, consonants and vowels. And now, again, to make it more simple, let's focus on consonants. For every consonant, there are three things that we need to know in order to know how the articulation takes place. Voicing, because once the air gets into the laryngeal cavity, your brain needs to make a decision. Do I vibrate the vocal folds or do I not vibrate the vocal folds or the vocal cords? It's either yes or no. If you vibrate, something happens. The sound, the consonant is going to be voiced. If you do not vibrate, if you just hold the vocal folds open and let the air go through without any vibration, then the consonant would be voiceless. The first decision that your brain 
needs to make is voice, not voice. It's like a binary decision. The second one is place of articulation. Which part of your vocal tract should you engage in the articulation process? Of course, it would be more accurate to say which parts because you need two parts. Like you need two hands to make a sound, right? With one hand, you cannot make a sound. Even when you snap your fingers, you need two fingers. So for every sound, you need two articulators to get involved. Okay. So which two parts of the vocal tract are engaged? That's the second decision. The third decision is how they are engaged, which would be manner of articulation. So voicing, place of articulation, or also point of articulation. And then the last, last but not least, manner of articulation. But I'm going to give you one example. Okay, I said voicing. Voicing can be either it's voiced or not, right? So for POA, you have a bunch of stuff. I'll give you just one example. Feelum. Feeler, and then MOA, which can be plosive. So choose voiced or unvoiced. Which one do you want to choose? So if you make the choice to make it unvoiced, then it's the place of articulation is velum, the velum, which makes it a velar sound, velar being the adjective for velum, which uh, is the soft palate. And then it's a plosive sound. And if the place is velar and if it is a plosive, then you have the sound k, k like cat, car, back. And then if you had made the choice to be voiced and then this place was velum, the velum, and it was a plosive, it would be g, g, like good, like garden. So this is a basic example of how the articulators are engaged to produce consonants, specific consonants. Thanks for your time and attention and see you again soon.